excuse me, hey there, sorry, I'm interrupting myself actually, but I want to tell you what this is. This is a free version of the Ezra Levant Show. Now, normally it's behind a paywall and you have to become a subscriber to what we call Rebel News Plus to see it. But once a week, we take a show from behind the paywall and put it up so you can see what you're missing. Now, I hope you enjoy this show enough to become a subscriber. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. Eight bucks a month, which is about half the price of Netflix. You get my show every weekday, plus four other weekly shows from other Rebels. Enjoy the show, and if you like it a lot, why not subscribe? Okay, back to the show. Canadian-style book censorship comes to China. Yes, I did read that right. Then reporter Adam Sos joins us to talk about the Pope visiting Alberta and then Quebec. It's July 22nd, 2022. I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed, but you are watching The Ezra Levant Show. Shame on you, you censorious bug. Do you remember when Justin Trudeau said this about the communist dictatorship and chronic human rights abusers in the Chinese government not all that long ago? Remember this? There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say, we need to go green as fast as we need to start, you know, investing in solar. I mean, there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship that he could do everything he wanted. Uh, that I find quite interesting. But Justin Trudeau's admiration for the evil communist government of China is so deep and so all-consuming that sometimes he out-CCPs the CCP. For example, in May, China arrested Cardinal Zen, the outspoken Catholic Cardinal of Hong Kong, an elderly man who fearlessly speaks out for human rights and religious freedom, knowing it could mean his death. This man begs his own church not to capitulate to the evil of the communists as they force Christians underground and rewrite the Christian Bible to strip it of important lessons about the supremacy of God over the state. And the world, when Zen was arrested, took notice. But here in Canada, we've been doing that stuff for years, arresting pastors like Art Pulowski, Tim Stevens, James Coates, forcing their congregations into hiding and holding the men in prison for failing to give their churches over to the control of the state during covid now, to be clear, this much of it happened in Alberta under a conservative premier who has now resigned, thank God. But had this happened in China or the USA, the world would have spoken out. But since it happened in progressive Trudeau's Canada and to Christians, none of the usual human rights advocates said much of anything. By the way, that ruling which saw Art Pulowski held for contempt for weeks, it was thrown out today in the Alberta Court of Appeal. Three judges were sober second thought as they threw the whole thing out. They ordered the fines and costs paid by Art returned, but they can't give him back the time he served in jail. Now, back to Cardinal Zen. Unlike Alberta's pastors held for weeks each, Zen was released on bail within hours. But in Canada, political dissidents like Cardinal Zen, well, they're denied bail. Pat King, a man with whom I have many disagreements, was recently just released on bail after being held since February on a dozen mostly minor charges related to his participation in the anti-Trudeau, anti-COVID restriction freedom convoy to Ottawa protest. Five months in jail. Then there's Tamara Leach, the smiley Métis grandma from Medicine Hat, a woman so diminutive and unthreatening that she makes me look like an Amazon. She was held for weeks after her first arrest for the crime of creatively and peacefully protesting her government in our nation's capital. She was rearrested after taking a verboten photograph with a fellow convoy organizer, which the liberal supporting Crown prosecutor now claims is a violation of a requirement to not communicate with her fellow convoy organizers unless Leach is with her lawyers. However, the picture was taken at an event put on by Leach's lawyers. Trudeau's Emergencies Act, the one he used to euthanize the protests against him and silence and imprison his critics, 
Sounds a lot like the security laws the Chinese government frequently uses to arrest people like Cardinal Zen for being just a little too vocal about their distaste for the current government. And that brings me to my actual point, and I know it took us a bit of a ways to get here. Sorry about that. Because this story here is why I really started this monologue today. I saw this in The Guardian. Yeah, I know sometimes I read The Guardian. This looks like Canadian-style book censorship coming to China. Look at this. Hong Kong publishers excluded from book fair over politically sensitive material. At least three booksellers say they were banned from the annual jamboree as the city embarks on new forms of censorship. Hong Kong publishers have decried a new form of censorship after vendors selling books deemed politically sensitive were allegedly excluded from the industry's traditional annual trade fair. With hundreds of exhibitors spread over the city's major exhibition facility, the seven-day event, which began this week, once drew more than one million visitors and was a staple business opportunity for the sector. But this year, publishers that showcased books last year about the protests that swept the city in 2019 have been banned from the book fair without explanation. I know you might say, Sheila, we don't ban books in Canada. You're being crazy. Yeah, we just investigate them like when Justin Trudeau's elections cops investigated my boss, Ezra Levant, for writing a book critical of the government in the lead up to an election, which is exactly when you should be reading books critical of the government, by the way. But no, we actually do ban books. And no one really bats an eye about it because politics. True North journalist Andrew Lawton wrote a best-selling book that was a bestseller in multiple categories before it was even released. It's called The Freedom Convoy, the inside story of three weeks that shook the world. And it's about those anti-Trudeau Freedom Convoy protests that landed in the city of Ottawa and remained peacefully there for nearly four weeks before, as I explained earlier, Justin Trudeau used a Chinese-style security law to round up political dissidents like Tamara Leach and seize their assets. Indigo, Canada's largest physical book retailer, will not put Andrew's book on the shelf. They won't explain why they won't do it. Now, this is a publisher that will happily sell you a copy of the Communist Manifesto in paperback for about 11 books, a book that laid the groundwork for the deaths of millions of people worldwide. Chapters Indigo will also sell you a copy of Mein Kampf written by Hitler. But the subject matter of Andrew Lawton's book, his first-hand reporting on the Freedom Convoy, well, that might be just a little too touchy for these people. Justin Trudeau didn't even have to do what other communist countries do, forcibly nationalizing the business sector. You see, in the Western world, the business community is just so woke and so weak that they comply out of laziness and cowardice. They know the rules without even being told. It makes me wonder if someday some idiotic generational Chinese politician will say that Canada is the authoritarian bully that he really admires. Stay with us. Adam Sos joins us up after the break. Pope Francis, the leader of the global Catholic Church, is coming to Canada. His first stop is in Edmonton. And Rebel News journalists, you might not believe this, but we have been accredited to cover the event. And the accreditation process was actually handled through Global Affairs Canada. But we are going to be out in full force to cover this monumental and historic visit by Pope Francis to Alberta's capital. And we're going to cover a lot of the different political angles that perhaps the other outlets covering the event may not understand. So joining me now is a fellow Catholic and Pope watcher, Adam Sos, my colleague from Calgary. Adam, thanks for coming on the show as I fill in for Ezra. Why don't you give us a rough breakdown of sort of the Pope's itinerary, and then we'll talk about why he's coming. 
Yeah, so Pope Francis is set to arrive on Sunday in Edmonton. Um, effectively, that day is going to be, he's an older man, obviously. Um, so Pope Francis will arrive, uh, make his way, which in, in fact actually involves closing down the entire QA2 into Edmonton. He's going to rest for the remainder of the day. Um, for the following few days, he is in Edmonton, uh, visiting a couple locations of significance. I'm just outside of Edmonton, uh, kind of back towards Calgary a little bit. Um, he's going to be visiting one of the Indigenous communities there. Um, as well as uh, uh, Sacred Heart Church in Edmonton, which is sort of an indigenous-oriented um, Catholic church. Um, and then the big day really will be Tuesday, where there will be mass uh, at Commonwealth Stadium. Um, 65,000 people or more are expected for that, and that's not including potential protesters. Um, and there will also be a pilgrimage uh, of sorts out to Lac St. Anne, which is a uh, rather well-known and, and famous uh, Catholic indigenous connected pilgrimage site here in Alberta, uh, an hour and a half out of Edmonton. Um, so a very busy itinerary. After that, he's going to be heading out um, to Quebec. And I know Alex will be there touching base with her, but uh, it should be a very interesting visit. Overall, they're as assuming that there will be as many as 120,000 uh, visitors, whether protesters or attendees or whatever it may be, um, in Edmonton for the papal visit. So basically a 10% jump to the city's population accompanying uh, Pope Francis. Yeah, this is a huge deal. One of my earliest memories is John Paul II coming to Edmonton um, and going with my my mom. And um, I think the reason for this trip spawns from a lie, and it spawns yeah. from Justin Trudeau attempting to abdic abdicate liberal responsibility um, yeah. for the residential school problem. So. Um, the demand for Pope Francis, an elderly, sickly pope, to come across the world on this trip has to do with residential school discoveries, which, as it turns out, are not really discoveries at all. And then Justin Trudeau demanded that Pope Francis apologize for cultural genocide. And as you have an interview coming out with um, a priest who is of Indigenous descent, who says that this the church did what the government asked them to do with regard to residential schools. Why do you explain that? I'm talking too much. You you have the full story. You explain it. Yeah, you know, it's incredible, actually. And very often what we have, and this is extremely problematic, which is why I wanted to go straight to the source. Um, you have people speaking on behalf of Indigenous communities rather than uh, members of the Indigenous communities themselves sharing their story. So uh, Father Cristino Bouvet is a, a priest of Indigenous heritage. Um, he's also, as I mentioned, a Catholic priest. So I sat down with him to talk about sort of the hopes, ambitions and intentions behind this. But we did get into some of the nitty gritty and talked about the history of uh, the fact the church has apologized several times. Uh, John Paul II made it uh, apologized on his tour. Uh, Pope Benedict apologized. Pope Francis apologized repeatedly saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, to, to make overtly clear that this is certainly a dark portion of the church's history. But uh, Father Christine Bouvet did an incredible job getting into the fact that these these uh, residential schools were mandated by the government, organized by the government, funded by the government. And basically what happened was they would ask local uh, communities. So it wasn't necessarily always Catholic communities, but uh, places that had had facilities that could uh, oversee teaching, um, oversee hospital care, all these types of things to be involved. So they would effectively contract them out to run these federal state mandated residential schools. Um, that being said, that doesn't excuse that there was abuse, that it was categorically sure. wrong, but it does it does 100 uh, percent uh, excuse me percent speak to the fact that this was run by the Liberal government and even uh, Justin Trudeau's own dad was involved in the red residential school legacy. Um, but yeah, the, the the amount of malice directed and and the redirect that the government's trying to do to point the finger, um, at, at the church and single-handedly the church is, is political and it's dangerous. We saw uh, mass arson, vandalism, all of those things resulting from these faulty headlines that have now largely been debunked. Uh, Father Cristino and numerous Indigenous leaders that I've spoken to when we've been out doing the repair, the roof campaign or some of these other initiatives, um, they've said that this is not news. This is news to white people, maybe. But for the Indigenous communities, this is hurt that they've been working through. Um, and, and for this to be drawn up and drawn out as as political fodder or political uh, uh, campaigning material, 
is sickening. And the fact that when they realized, oh, the, wait, they already knew about this, or this isn't a mass grave, it's actually an apple orchard. Uh, when that stuff came out, these mainstream media outlets who were all over this, who were heralding this and, and demeaning and bashing the church, well, they were nowhere, uh, nowhere to be found when it came to retracting or correcting those errors. One of the things we talked about was truth and reconciliation. Uh, and Father Christina rightly pointed out that, that truth in, encompasses all truth not just the truth of certain voices and certain people, and that we can't have honest reconciliation if we're only having versions or select sort of uh, snippets and selective choices of the truth. We need the truth in its entirety. As I see this, as I see Justin Trudeau demanding that the Pope come here and apologize for cultural genocide, something the church has repeatedly apologized for, it mm -hmm. feels as though cynical legacy building for Justin Trudeau, that he is the guy that was able to wring out yet another yep. apology from yet another highly apologetic pope. So I don't know what he thinks Trudeau thinks he's achieving here, but I think it's legacy building for Trudeau that even the church, the global church, was under his foot and did what he demanded. 100%. I think you've got it right there on the money. And frankly, uh, as someone who's extremely concerned about Indigenous issues, I mean, I've got a few issues in this country that really get me upset. And the fact that current Indigenous populations don't have clean drinking water, the kids' skin is being burnt by uh, acids and even carcinogens in those waters in Canada, a uh, purportedly advanced civilized democracy, um, while Justin Trudeau parades around as though he's the savior of these people, is absolutely sickening to me. So we also spoke at length, and I asked if he expected Pope Francis, a pope who's known to speak at length to social issues and sometimes um, step into that arena that popes in the past haven't, um, he, he, he may very well call on or at least suggest that the government absolutely needs to, instead of only looking at the past and apologizing for the ills of the wrong, needs to take active action and enact some social justice for the indigenous communities today. Because the fact is we care about as much, and I'm not saying we, I'm saying this government, cares about as much as the about the indigenous peoples today as they did when they ran the residential schools. And that's proof and point in the fact that there isn't clean drinking water. Yeah, uh, John Paul II apologized for residential schools in 1984. He made a special visit um, to Canada just to uh, repair the relationship with Canada's Indigenous people. Um, anybody who knows anything about the church know, knows how much John Paul II cared about Indigenous people. And he said it had a lot to do with that his mom was an Eastern Rite Catholic. So he thought it was important for the church to speak to the people who are worshipping in the churches, in their language, in their native culture, um, but leave it to somebody like Justin Trudeau to completely either ignore that or uh, disregard it for his own um, cynical purposes. And Adam, you've probably repaired one more church than the entire uh, liberal government ever has. Yeah, we're uh, and we're just getting started. I think that uh... I think that people at Rebel News, obviously, as we saw with the uh, Repair the Church uh, campaign, where we did replace that uh, church, we replaced some broken windows, got some pest control um, after the request of uh, of uh, Ruby Starlight there for us to help her church out because she couldn't get funding from the government. It took mere hours to raise that entire uh, fund base, and I absolutely love that the uh, careless and cold-hearted conservatives that we are, well, it took them hours to pay for that entirely. I don't think that there is an issue that is so unifyingly impassioning as, as the thought of a Canadian child, Indigenous or not, not having clean drinking water, not having uh, the same rights that we all enjoy as Canadians. Um, so I think we're just getting started on that front. And I, I do have a campaign in mind that, uh, that we're working on in the background to have some more meaningful action because I'm sick of politicians campaigning on the suffering of Indigenous people. Um, we need politicians provincially, federally, and church leaders to take a stand and make an active change, uh, not just virtue signal and host panels and synods. We need to have action right away, not in 10 years, not in five years, in a couple months. Now, uh, on just on the matter of the church and the, the Pope coming to Edmonton, um, the size of the city is anticipated to go up 10 percent the pope is a big draw he's a big deal um <laughs> and i know that there are catholics coming from all over the country all over from north america to uh, edmonton 
but I anticipate that there will be protesters um, just yeah. due to the location of where the, the papal mass is being held at, at Commonwealth Stadium, at the biggest venue, the only venue that would be able to facilitate something like this. But it's right off the LRT. It's not in the best part of the city. And Edmonton was hit with church vandalism just up the road at St. Joseph at. They vandalized a statue of Pope John Paul II. And so uh, what what are you and the team sort of planning for with regard to the protests or the antis here? Yeah, we will certainly have an extensive team on the ground bringing you that, bringing the other side of the story, certainly. And it's interesting, Father Cristino, as I spoke with him, he said it's important to hear those perspectives because uh, while there may be some protesters who are there, whether they're paid to or because their their boss tells them to or whatever it may be, there will be people protesting because they are absolutely devastated by what I will call the crimes of the church, the crimes of the government within these residential schools. Some of the things we've heard are absolutely heartbreaking that that we know to be facts. Um, so I think it is important and we will ask these people why they are protesting. But I do hope that they come from a place of of wanting to heal, wanting to obtain truth, uh, wanting to to obtain reconciliation through that process, which can be, be painful and can lead to these types of outbursts. I think Martin Luther King said something to the effect of like, violence is the language of, of, of people with no voice. Um, there will be some of that, but I, I, what my major fear is here is that people who have politicized this issue rather than humanized this issue will be there, the same people who are burning the churches that belong yeah. to these indigenous communities, they will be there um, completely undermining the process, as, as Father Christina and I spoke about in the interview, picking at the scab of reconciliation for personal and vindictive reasons. There will be people there who simply hate the church, hate Christianity, and want to sow seeds of destruction. And I suppose on that front, uh, we're going to cover it. We're going to we're going to show those stories that maybe other people will shy away from. Um, if there is ugliness to that side, we will show that as well. Um, but I, I'm hopeful that people can be respectful. Um, understand that this is a religious leader of a religious community. And if you show up uh, issuing threats, being violent, those are hate crimes. Um, you can't prof profess to be a great protector and equal rights advocate and progressive and then overtly marginalize, attack and oppress and even become violent towards a religious community gathering for worship. That's categorically unacceptable. But again, we will be on the ground covering all of that. Um, and you can find all those reports at popereports.com. Um, right across Canada with Alexa heading over in Quebec too. We're going to be uh, covering it from start to finish. We'll be inside some events, hopefully asking some questions. We'll certainly be uh, uh, looking in from the outside. The The media accreditation process, because there are so many people, is a little bit chaotic. We've applied for access. We've been accredited, but then there's access because there's only so many spots to different areas. We're waiting to hear back what we'll actually have access to inside. But uh, again, we'll be bringing you the other side of the story from the Pope's visit in Edmonton. Yeah, no matter where we are, whether we're inside or outside, I think we're going to be doing important journalism that you won't see anywhere else. And I do think there is going to be a lot of hypocrisy, hate crimes, yeah. hate speech committed against Catholics um, that the mainstream media will ignore and we will be there to document it. Adam, thanks so much for um, being willing to make the journey up to see the Pope and to cover the papal visit to Edmonton. Um, and you know, you're just such a valuable member of the team, a real team leader in Calgary. Thanks so much, Adam. Thank you. Appreciate that. Your letters to Ezra up next after the break. My mug? I know. It's pretty cool. So is this hoodie I got on, and you could have it on too if you check out our special website at rebelnewsstore.com. That's where you can see Freedom Focus hoodies that we have for you, beanies, cell phone cases, you name it, all while supporting our journalism where we fight to bring you the other side of the story as opposed to, you know, being forced by the Trudeau government to fund leftist media out of your taxes. The truth is, without you and your generosity, there is no rebel news. So again, if you like the reports that we bring you and that we also fight for freedoms in Canada, please consider doing some shopping, picking up some swag at rebelnewsstore.com. We appreciate your support. And we've come to the portion of the show that 
well, Ezra used to call it reading his hate mail, but I don't think he gets that much hate mail anymore. I know I don't. I don't think we generally do at Rebel News because despite what the corporate bought off media would have you believe, I think we are the mainstream. We improperly identify the corporate bought off subsidized media as the mainstream media, but frankly, I think it's us. Because I think that nowadays, the people who watch us, sure, yeah, the majority are from the right, but there's a substantial portion of people who are on the left, but they are united with us in the idea that they just want to be left alone by the government and by their neighbors to live their lives, lives however they see fit. Now, the mainstream media, they will tell you how to live your life. They'll happily take your money from Justin Trudeau, but they don't want to hear from you. We do. That's why we take your questions and comments at the end of the show. So let's get right into it. Chris Wallace says the reduction of many taxes and especially the elimination of carbon taxes would immediately leave more money in the pockets of Canadians and avoid the need of a raise. If only the government could understand basic economic principles, CBC should have a 30% reduction in salaries, if not more. This is a comment based on, I guess it would be my monologue the other day when I covered for Ezra about somebody from CBC. I think it was their financial advice person saying like, look, if inflation's hitting you hard, just go to your boss and ask for a raise. I, it works at the CBC because they've paid out $30 million in pandemic raises and nobody watches them. But moreover to your point, uh, CBC could have a 100% reduction in salaries and I wouldn't care. <laughs> and I don't think most people would miss them either. I think their latest viewership um, on their flagship shows, like the news, the reason they say they exist, it's a statistical rounding error of Canadians. I think it's Canadian grandparents who had their grandkids put their TVs on CBC because they wanted to watch curling and then they just didn't know how to get it off CBC to watch something better. Let's keep going. Smokey the Bear says, just remember, prices won't go back down. Even if costs go down for companies, they'll still keep the prices high for more profit. I'm not necessarily sure about that. There are a lot of things that factor into the price of everything. And I'm not sure where costs can go down for companies at this point. Do you think fuel is going to normalize? There are a lot of companies right now that are really having their profits eaten into as they resist raising the prices. People talk about how sinister Walmart is, but they are really resisting raising their prices, even though they are being hammered by carbon taxes and transportation costs and supply chain issues. And they just really are resisting raising their prices to the consumer. So, um, I, you know, I'm not, but prices will probably never go back down, but I think it is because the input costs will also probably never go down either. Big Dipper 188 says, does anyone else have an uncontrollable urge to yell silence, Karen, whenever they hear Freeland speak so much as a single word? I've actually seen her speak in person and it is as bad as you can imagine. Sometimes though, when I'm watching clips of Christia Freeland, just to fact check myself, because sometimes I think maybe it's her voice I hate, but it's not. Turn the sound off and watch Christia Freeland with no sound. And look at just how wriggly that woman is. And it's not just when she's around Justin Trudeau. At first, I thought maybe Justin Trudeau has that effect on her that she's sort of wiggling out of her skin. Maybe he drives the woman wild. But no, I was at the Media Freedom Conference a few years ago in London with Ezra. And she was on stage. No Justin Trudeau to be found. And she was still doing that thing that she does where she doesn't know how to sit still and behave herself. It was frankly quite embarrassing. Um, if I were a liberal, I would be mortified. But I'm not. So I'm less mortified. Anyway, that's the show for tonight, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to everybody in the office in Toronto who works really hard to put the show together and everybody who works behind the scenes. Thanks to my guest, Adam. Thanks to the boss for trusting me with his show one more night. And as Ezra always says, keep fighting for freedom.
So I absolutely love having the opportunity to chat with you, to chat with our ever growing audience. But I'd actually love for you to have that opportunity as well. We actually have advertising opportunities available with rebelnews.com. We don't get handouts from the government. We trust on supporters, viewers, and advertisers like you. So instead of folks listening to me in this spot, they could actually be checking out your company, getting information about your business. For more information or to advertise with us, send an email to ads at rebelnews.com.